lot of take to him because he knows a lot more about all this than I do. I'm just learning. Uh, mostly what he likes to say is I'm really smart. Um, but I've done a lot of the presentations. And so what we're kind of talking about today is our cultural forestry side uh, of what we do within our parts of the Cherokee Nation. Um, so kind of starting out with whatever we talk about here, we kind of talk about this Cherokee ethnobiology. And what ethnobiology is, is it's the study of how Native people interact with their environment. Obviously, we're focused on the Cherokee here. And so we always start out with the red bird or with the cardinal, or the cardinal here, because it kind of gives an idea on how Native people act and react with their environment. When they saw a northern cardinal, they actually believed that the cardinal was a messenger. And it sort of even depends on what family you come from, um, on whether or not you think those are good, good or bad messages. Some people believe that the cardinal brings a message of death, kind of similar and somewhat to like an owl. Um, but others actually believe that it depends on how many males or females that you're seeing, that they can bring bad messages, and if you're seeing a lot of male cardinals, it's coming from a man. Or if you're seeing a lot of female cardinals, it's coming from a female. But it kind of gives you an idea of what we mean when we start talking about them interacting with their environment and how they're looking to nature uh, to sort of determine what, what's getting ready to happen or what they should be doing. So, of course, this kind of talks about that a little bit more. Uh, cardinal has great uh, significance in Cherokee culture. It can be a bringer of news, both good and bad. And once again, it kind of depends on the family. Um, certain families were very, very much believe that it's bad. Uh, one of the most revered Cherokee traditionalists, the Red Bird Smith, was named after this name. So that kind of gives you an idea of how important the Red Bird was to uh, the importance of the natural environment. What we're actually sort of pointing out here is the white-tailed deer. Now, everybody knows that deer were important for Native peoples, especially our southeastern woodlands tribes. It was a source of food. It was a source of clothing. For the Cherokees, one of our clans is named after the deer. It was uh, a religious icon. It was actually also responsible for the first Cherokee land loss. Um, Cherokees, of course, didn't understand the concept of borrowing off credit. But once we were introduced to the Europeans, they taught us about credit, and as a result, we actually had a white-tailed deer credit. Well, they had, they were hunting white-tailed deer so much at that time that our white-tailed deer numbers severely, severely went. I think um, in 17, around 1710, they were killing somewhere around 400,000 white-tailed deer a year. So the, the white-tailed deer numbers had dwindled so much that they could no longer supply their white-tailed deer pelts to the Europeans, and as a result, couldn't pay off their credit. And it actually led to the very first Cherokee land loss. So, uh, generally, when we talk about our presentation, we first go into our seed bank activities. And in our seed bank, we actually grow a lot of our plants out in our native plant site and garden, and then we pass those seeds out to Cherokee Nation citizens, and occasionally some groups and organizations and things like that as well. All uh, seeds that are important for the Cherokees. And then next, we go into cultural forestry, which is what we're going to more talk about today. So, of course, whenever we think of forest, we think of trees. Uh, and, you know, anytime you can just ask kids, what do you think of when you think of forest? They'll say trees. Well, southeastern people and the Cherokees were considered a people of the eastern deciduous forest. But obviously, we weren't just relying on the trees. We are also relying on all those other plants that can only be found out in the forest. So, these ain't no trees. We'll talk about some of the plants that we were specifically focused on getting in next. Um, of course, what real forestry looks like, you know, when originally when people started first becoming um, interested in conservation and forestry, well, what was forestry? When they would go through and they would cut down trees, they would plant a bunch of pines. When you need a forest here, they plant a bunch of pines. Over time, as science has progressed, we've learned that that's not the best way of taking a, uh, actually approaching forestry. But this is sort of what we think of when we think of forestry. So our test. This just gets into some of those important charity plants. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if any of you guys, you should probably know quite a few of these plants. Sort of. Does anybody know this one? Juniper. Juniper, Eastern Red Cedar. Uh, red Cedar was very important for the Cherokees. Okay, no, the red Cedar is very important for the Cherokees. It was a sacred plant to us. Um, we basically would use it in smudging. It was used to kind of bless the home or even bless the person and keep the bad away. Now this one is a very popular plant. Anybody know this one? We do have this down in our garden. It's not looking too great at the moment. 
This is Dolor, which is tobacco. This is our native tobacco. So these are one of the plants that we do pass out in the seed bank. Um, our tobacco, uh, native tobacco, is much stronger than regular smoking tobacco. The nicotine content is something like uh, seven to nine times, uh, seven percent to nine percent times more stronger than what you would get out of regular smoking tobacco. So in general, this isn't really something that you would want to smoke, uh, but it is used medicinally. And even just touching that stuff, you touch that and touch your face. Uh, anybody know this one? This isn't something that you'd see around here a whole lot. Ginseng. This is our American ginseng. Of course, you look at a uh, energy drink, you'll almost always see ginseng on the side of the energy drink because that's what it's good for. It helps provide energy. And that's what Cherokee's used it for as well. Oftentimes, I believe our men use this before they go.
them away in the middle, you know, no descriptions. Instead of having red flowers or instead of having green, they kind of were yellow and white and they, they just looked all kinds of crazy. And so we went ahead and I put, picked one that I thought was obviously female. So this year we have it out in the garden when everything bloomed. Our original one bloomed like a typical male wood, it bloomed red. The one that I picked out bloomed more like a typical female and got these green different looking flowers. The other one that was somewhat in between never was red. It was kind of somewhat yellow and kind of somewhat green. It looked like it was very confused and somewhere in the middle. So we still don't know exactly what the difference is, but I do know that we have the same plant, but there are three very different versions of the plant in the garden. So we think we have our basis covered. What was the name of that plant? I got the word prairie, but I didn't. Prairie willow. Willow. Yes. It's, it's basically it's a willow, but instead of being real tall like a willow tree, it almost grows like a bush. Now, this one here is also referred to as red root. Uh, more commonly referred to as New Jersey tea. Uh, we do have this here in Oklahoma. You find it a lot in the southeast. Um, basically, where it pulls its name from is when the uh, Boston Tea Party occurred. There wasn't a whole lot of tea here to drink. Well, the Native Americans had always drank this in a tea form. It has no caffeine content, but a lot of the um, settlers that were here also started drinking this in a tea form form, and I think that's when it filled up the name. Oh, well, what was your word? It has no what kind of content? It has no caffeine. Caffeine, thank yeah. you. Um, but it does, I guess, have a very good flavor, but no caffeine. So not like your typical tea. Uh, but this is referred to as New Jersey tea and red root. Um, this one is also used medicinally. I know that it's drank a lot as a tea. I think sometimes it helps out with um, stomach cramps and stuff. There's actually kind of a fairly long list, but it wasn't anything you know, really major. It's kind of small enough so that's what I remember. Now this is Rattlesnake Master. Uh, you'll see this one, it tends to kind of prefer the dry areas. The little white ball on it, the little flower, it, it is kind of pokey, almost kind of like a thistle. It's sort of a tough little flower. Um, this is actually a Cherokee Warriors plant. The Cherokee Warriors are supposed to have this look on them at all times. Uh, a lot of people though would, they would carry pouches on their neck. If you were going to be outside a lot, you're going to be kind of walking throughout in the woods or something, they thought that you should have this plant with you because if you had it on you, they didn't think that any of the snakes would bother you or bite you. It was also used in the application of snake bites, not sure how. But like I said, Cherokee Warriors plant. So, the seven plants that we just talked about are referred to as the seven sacred plants of the Cherokee. But, not everybody agrees that those are actually seven sacred plants. Some believe that I think instead of cedar, it's dogwood. And instead of the New Jersey tea, I believe, they actually had, uh, say, lichen. Now, of course, lichen is a true plant, uh, but it is referred to as food for the wise, the Cherokee, which actually they believe that little people would eat this plant, or would eat lichen, which is one of the reasons that they think it's one of those seven sacred plants. So out of those nine plants, well, eight plants and not one lichen, we have seven sacred plants in there somewhere. So it kind of gives you an idea on how things have maybe slowly gotten lost over the years. But at the same time, it could have even depended on uh, villages of 